Hi guys. Another problem, equivalent systems. But in this case, in this time, uh, we are including distributed loading, which is a little bit more of the same. But the only difference here is that we have first let, let's read the problem and then do with some people do replace the loading by force and couple moment at all and then a single resultant force in other words the same thing that we did before but now we have the distributed loading and the only thing that we have to do is apply convert those distributed loading into an equivalent concentrated load and in order to do that the only thing that we do is apply a calculate the area of this, 6 times 7.5 divided by 2, 6 times 7.5 divided by 2, that's the area of this, how much is that, 23.5, 22.5, right, yeah, 22.5, and, yeah, 22.5, and 6, this one also, 6 times, 4.5 divided by 2, 6 times 4.5 divided by 2 because it's the area of the triangle and the location and the this is 3 times that so it's 13.5 13.5 kilonewton and kilonewton. The other thing that we need is the location of this. Remember in a triangle, triangular distributed load the location of the equivalent concentrated force is going to be two-thirds from the acute angle or one-third from the right angle. In this case, because we are calculating it with respect to the point O, I'm going to use this distance, which is two-thirds of 7.5. So 7.5 times two-thirds, that's 15 divided by 3 is 5. And for this other one, if I refer it to the right angle, which is this one, it's going to be one third. The location is going to be one third of 4.5. One third of 4.5 is just 1.5. That's it, 1.5. Now, after you have that, the problem is the same thing as we had done before. We have to calculate the summation of forces. So in order to calculate the resultant force, all the forces come in the y direction. So the resultant force is going to be 22.5. You forget about this. You don't use this anymore. So 22.5 plus 13.5 plus 15. And that is 36, 36 plus 15 is 51. 51 kilonewton acting in this direction. The second one is I need the moment with respect to the point O. So the moment with respect to the point O of all the forces, let's say that I'm assuming this as a positive. It doesn't matter because remember at the end uh, when you are working with 2D, the only thing that it matters is if it's clockwise or counterclockwise. So the first force you see, I was about to do something that I didn't want to do. I was starting with the forces, but look at this thing here. This is a moment, and the moment is already created right there. So don't forget that moment, because this is extremely, extremely, extremely number one cause of error. That is a moment acting clockwise, and I assume that clockwise was positive for this case. Now we continue with the forces. 22.5 multiplied by the distance, vertical force, horizontal distance, 5, rotation, apply the force, this direction, according to my convention here, is positive. Now 13.5 is the other force, multiplied by this distance. And how much is this distance? This distance will be 7.5 from here to here, plus this little piece, which is 1.5, 7.5 plus 1.5 and this is 9 by the way and it's positive in the same direction and then you have the 15 this load here and then that the distance is going to be 7.5 plus 4.5 so the resultant moment at O will be this plus this Now 
I'm 14, if I'm not mistaken. Let me do it again. You always repeat it again and again and again. Two times at least. Plus times 5 plus 13.5 times 9 plus 15 times 12. 914. 914 kilonewton meter acting in this way because it's positive and I say that meaning it's clockwise so the first question is answer now the second question the problem basically is telling you I don't want a moment at all I want to create a resultant force a resultant force but that resultant force is the only thing acting on this beam but that resultant force we already know is 51 kilonewton. But the issue is that that force placed at a distance d, which is our, our unknown, has to produce the same moment as all the other forces combined. So the only thing that we have to do is get this moment and say that this moment is equal to the resultant force multiplied by that distance d and solve for the distance d. When you solve for the distance d, then the distance d is going to be 914 divided by 51 and that's 17.92 meters. And that will be the answer to the problem. Now, don't get scared of this result because you have 7.5 and 4.5 is 12. What that means in reality is that for the resultant force to produce the same moment as all the combined forces, that resultant force should be somewhere over here. Not wherever I put it. Remember, this is just an indication. But the distance here should be equal to 17.92 meters and the force should be here. Now, realistically, this is impossible because you don't have any other beam. But theoretically, that is the answer of the problem. The force should be placed 17.92 meter away from the point O to produce the same effect as all the other forces combined. I hope that you like the problem, guys. Uh, keep watching. and. I'll see you next time or you'll see me next time better say keep learning